Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of MLB Talk. My name is Nick Tasca. As always, I'm your host. Uh, we have three changes today. Um, first, no suit and tie. It's a little bit hot in here, so I'm accommodating myself. Uh, two, I'm going to be talking a whole lot slower to help you guys out, because even in watching my own playback, I found myself a little bit hard to understand. So I'm going to slow up the speech a little bit. Three, uh, I'm actually introducing our first segment here on MLB Talk. It is called Fantasy Bust or Trust. I will take one offensive player, one pitcher from Fantasy Baseball. I will break down their stats. I will tell you what I think about them, how I think they're going to do, etc., etc., etc. Well, today's topics, we have Theo Epstein, uh, the new president of operations in the Chicago Cubs organization. And we have owner of the Los Angeles Angels, Art Moreno. So we're going to start off with a little bit of Art Moreno, uh, one of the biggest spenders in the MLB. So please enjoy this quick clip I've provided for you guys, and I will see you shortly. Art Moreno can be summed up in two words. Big spender. But I'm an aspiring broadcast journalist, so I'm going to go into a little bit more depth than that. Albert Pujols, 10 years, $240 million. CJ Wilson, 5 years, 77.5, oh yes, million dollars. Art Moreno's got no problem shelling out the dough. He purchased the Angels for $184 million in 2003 from Disney. And look where they are now. They're valued at $554 million by Forbes.com. Art Marino has had no problem shelling out the money before. Vernon Wells didn't turn up as well as he'd hoped with a 218 batting average and 20 home runs. you got to pick that up, Vernon. But still, no problem shelling out the money. Signed Howie Kendrick to a, an extension, which is definitely a great idea. This guy is an uprising star. I'm seeing a 280 batting average, 30 home runs. So it's 30 home runs possibly soon. Probably going to stay in the 25 range and 80 RBIs sometime in the near future. Eric Ibar, they're trying to lock him up too. This guy could be a 300 average hitter, 30 stolen bases. I'll take that. You know, the, uh, they're big three now, which can rival the Phillies' big three of Roy Halladay, Cliff Lee, and Cole Hamels. They have Jer- the Angels have Jared Weaver, Dan Harron, and now C.J. Wilson. Jared Weaver signed to an extension, making a lot of money. Dan Harron making a lot of money soon, T.J. Wilson making a lot of money, even their number four man, Irvin Santana, a number four pitcher, making $11 million. $11 million. Art's got no problem rolling out the dough, and you know what? He's doing a great job doing it. Um, after, however, the last two years haven't fared as well as he's hoped. You know, the last two years, 2010, 2011, were the only consecutive years since he's taken over the club that the Angels have missed the playoffs. 2010 wasn't that great of a year. 2011, 86 win season. That would be good for most people. I know that. I know that would definitely fly in the NL West. However, this is the AL West. So there you go. You got to pick that up, and that's what he intends on doing. Signing arguably the best player in baseball right now. Signing ar- unarguably the best pitcher on the market this recent se- uh, this recent off season. He traded for a better catcher, Chris Iannetta. He, uh, our, um, the Los Angeles Angels, tra- Angels traded. Tyler Chatwood for, uh, to the, uh, the Colorado Rockies for Chris Iannetta, who is a power hitter, 18 home run capable, 50-60 RBI capable. That's pretty respectable for a catcher, I'd say, for myself. Um, the outfield rolled out a lot of money in recent years. Torrey Hunter is Torrey Hunter. He will always be Torrey Hunter. This guy is making a lot of money, you know. He deserves it. He's, he's been in the face of the Angels for a while. And also, Bobby Abreu. And Vernon Wells, the three, the number three and number four outfielders, uh, Vernon Wells and Bobby Breu, respectively, in that order, um, making quite a lot of money, and I think they got to pick up the slack. Bobby Breu is getting old. This could be his last hurrah with the Angels. He could be the last hurrah with any ball club. We'll see what happens. But um, he's got no problem dishing out the money. Um, you know, he uh, as the postseason. Hopes disappeared last season, so did most of their front office. 
out went the GM of the Angels, and in came Jerry Depoto, who was fresh off a stint as the interim general manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks. A lot of fans had to be going in in Los Angeles during the winter meetings. What is what is their plan? What are they thinking? Do you want to know what their plan was? Sign the best player. Sign the best pitcher. Do what you can with it. What did they do with it? They're now one of the most feared teams in in baseball. During the winter meetings, they made an even bigger splash than the Miami Marlins, who signed Heath Bell, Jose Reyes, and Mark Burley, all all stars. Bell is a Terrific closer, Jose Reyes, a speedster, even when he's not healthy, which let's hope he stays healthy. And Mark Burley, one of the most consistent pitchers in the game today, who's also a perfect game thrower and a no-hitter thrower. So, um, anyway, this is not about the Marlins. This is about the Angels, and this is about Art Moreno spending. He's got no problem doing that, and in closing, I will tell you why he has no problem doing that. He wants to win. His sole purpose here is to win. That is why anybody wants to be in charge of a major league ball club. Win. A 95-win season is not far out of sight for the Angels. They can grab it this year. Texas has lost a couple of key players. Josh Hamilton. Ha Josh Hamilton's contract year is coming up, and he's not even talking about a contract extension if they don't get one done by spring training. And as of recently, with his, uh, with his, uh, with his awful relapse, sorry to hear about it, he's not going to be discussing a contract extension anytime soon. So. Even if the Angels um, pull up, pull, don't make it to the playoffs this season, losing Josh Hamilton for the Rangers is a key piece, and the Oakland A's and Seattle Mariners and soon to be the Houston Astros, nowhere near in sight for any division title. So the Los Angeles Angels need to bide their time, but at the same time this season they need to, they need to pounce. They need to go all out. They need to, they need to push to no end because of all the money Art Moreno is dishing out. Albert Pools' contract, heavily backloaded, $30 million when he's 41 years old. It's a lot of money. These guys need to keep producing. And I feel that by Art Marino dishing out this money, by Art Marino doing what he can to be a great owner for this team, in case you didn't tell by the video clip I just showed you, this guy's getting pretty good ovations for press conferences, you know. Um, as long as Art Moreno can keep dishing out the money, as long as, he can, as long as his team can stay healthy and strong, I think the Angels will be a force to be reckoned with. Now, I'm going to give you guys the Theo Epstein bit I did in a few moments, so please um, uh, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this clip, and I will see you guys momentarily. In baseball, in the front office, I can only think of one craze. That is to have a young, fresh, analytical, and intelligent mind run your organization. And Theo Epstein, the new president of baseball operations for the Chicago Cubs, is doing exactly that. He is trying to emulate the success, bring the success over, that he had with Boston to Chicago. However, many people feel that he didn't have much success, and I am here to prove you wrong. Many feel that Theo Epstein was merely given a team, handed to him. Pedro Martinez and Manny Ramirez, sure, he had no responsibility in signing them, uh, in drafting them, in trading for them. However, think about this. He is responsible for trading them. Manny Ramirez has been met with much controversy since leaving the Red Sox three years ago. And Pedro Martinez had minor success with the Mets, and then he kept getting hurt. So Theo Epstein, in a way, is responsible for fixing the team in a way. Let me give you a few names that will prove many spectator statements wrong. Josh Beckett, Adrian Gonzalez, Dustin Pedroia, Jacoby Ellsbury. Who was responsible for that? Are you going to tell me Theo Epstein was not responsible for bringing over one of the best first basemen I, in my opinion, the best first baseman behind Pujols. Uh, are you telling me that arguably the best second baseman in MLB right now, that that was not Theo Epstein's doing? Well, you're wrong. This guy is very decorated. He One of his more important accolades in 2009, he was named by Sports Illustrated as executive of the, uh, as one of the executives of the decade, one of the best executive authority figures out of all sports. Football, badminton, ping pong, whatever the hell you want to call a sport. Especially baseball. He was number three. Number three. 
okay? This guy is showing great potential. Right now, the only problem is that he's the face of the Cubs. And therefore, he's got a little list of things that he has to do, and I have provided it for him. Hopefully, he manages to watch this video. First, Theo Epstein, you gotta trade Carlos Sombrano. Hey, look at that. You already got one cross off the list. You gave him Miami, paying most of his salary, but that's gonna disapparate with Brian Dempster's contract as well next year as they are both free agents. Um, trade Alfonso Soriano. This is something you guys gotta do. I'm sure most Cub fans agree on this. It's owed $54 million in the remainder of his contract. Now, there are teams that need a DH. With the Rays, they have Luke Scott, but, you know, how consistent is he? You know, he was hurt last year. Alfonso Soriano has been dropping in has been dropping in value, but he's still a 20 home run threat. That's somebody you can use as a DH, and that's somebody who I would possibly trade for somebody like James Shields. You know, you got to build up on the pitching. But in contrast to that, should you guys be in the middle of an intense losing season, I would trade Matt Garza to a um, a contending team who can offer you something that the Chicago Cubs do not have. That is a good farm system. You can get some top prospects from Matt Garza. You can even get a nice little bench player on the side. All necessary. And the last thing you guys need, you need some overhauls in your scouting and development department, man. Just saying. But, listen, overall, he's definitely got some talent to work with. Starlin Castro, 207 hits. He led the MLB in hits last year. Big problem, though, he did have 29 errors. That's not desirable. Ian Stewart, a recent acquisition, he's making a little bit over $2 million this year, and unless he manages to stay in a two-year slump that he acquired last year, I think he's going to be pretty safe for a 20 home run guy. Um, backstop Giovanni Soto, if he can stay consistent, I think he's a solid player. And, you know, you just gotta, you got to build it up. Overall, I think in a few years, Theo Epstein will not be the face of the Cubs anymore. Instead, you will have Starlin Castro. You will have a power-hitting first baseman. Maybe you'll have Ian Stewart consistently if he stays with the team that long. You're even going to have um, Giovanni Soto. He could be a mainstay as well. You might have a couple of aces. Hey, listen, Matt Cain's a free agent next year. You can either trade for him now, or you could sign him, or you could sign him when he's a free agent. Um, Theo Epstein is going to build his team in his vision. He's going to use the money ball method. He's going to use ad advanced sabermetrics, um, baseball statistics, advanced baseball statistics, such as war, which is wins above replacement level, and also APR, which is the number of runs a pitcher prevents compared to the league average. Those are important stats you need on a player, all right? Because those stats lead to great offense, which wins games, and great defense, which, as I said previously, wins championships. And I think that... If he factors all of these stats in, if he can get the right guys, if he can complete my little checklist, I think the Cubs can be a contender in a few years, and I think the curse of the Billy Goat will be on forever. Um, well, we're going to take another quick five-second break or so. Uh, please enjoy your break. Uh, go get a drink if you, if you need to. And I will finish with our last segment, um, Fancy Bust or Trust. So get ready, guys, because it's going to be fun. Hey guys, I'm sorry for this change of scenery. I have to make this quick though because the YouTube manager took too long to upload the video. It was too long. Today's Buster Trust scene are about two players, one catcher and one pitcher, both Chris Iannetta of the Los Angeles Angels, who I mentioned previously before. He will definitely get you pop with 18 home runs, possibly 50, 60 RBIs, but he's really only useful if you can deal with a low batting average. This guy hits 230, 220. My advice, bust. You might want to stay away from him unless you need a backup catcher. Second, Jeremy Guthrie, who everybody believes is a bust because he has a, he accumulates overall usually a 5-17 and 17 record. That is irrelevant now because now he's on the Colorado Rockies after being traded by the Baltimore Orioles. He has a little bit more protection in the lineup. He's a little more security. Um, however, the uh, course field is, you know, thin air. could be a hitter's haven, you know. Anyway, I'm sorry to cut you guys short really quick, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you guys tune in next week. We have a nice category. I'll be going over my fantasy team. Uh, until then, I'm Nick Tasca. I'm your host. I hope you enjoyed the second episode of MLB Talk. Bye, guys.